Alright, so I've just finished up the disc, and now I'm going to go and do the support pin and the bolt. So, I'm going to go new part. First thing I'm going to do is save it as the support pin. Don't use spaces. Spaces are bad. I'm going to go and do a uh, new sketch right here. I've got my circle with a diameter of 0.25, not 2.5. 2.5 is very wrong. Um, and see, I uh, didn't think I didn't put it on the center, but I want it to be on the center. So normally I could just click and drag, and you can see the little symbol down there, right bottom, or below and to the right of my little point. That That's the uh, coincidal constraint. It's this one. Um, and that will snap it right onto the center. If that doesn't show up when you try and move it by hand, then you're going to need to use that little constraint button. So there we go. Now it's all on the center. We do the extrude 1.63 inches. So now here's the reason why we always um, do our sketches on the XY plane and then extend symmetrically. Because now if I go and I want to do this next part, which is just another cylinder with a diameter of 0.19 and a length of 0.5. Now, rather than me going over here and doing a new sketch and another circle and blah blah blah, just repeating what I, exactly what I just did, I can actually just mirror it. So here I've selected the features that I want to mirror, and then I'm going to select the mirror plane. So if I just hover over here until I find the XY plane, that's where it's symmetrical, or about to be. And so you can see it's made these little green circles because it's too lazy to actually preview the entire thing. Now I click OK and shabam! Right there, it's an exact mirror, an exact duplicate. And that can save you some time, especially when you're doing really complicated extrusions over here or features or whatever, rather than just uh, a little extrusion here. So I've done that, and now I've got to put the chamfer on. But just to demonstrate, you know, this mirror being able to do multiple things, I'm going to do the chamfer on this side of 0.03 inches, and then do my mirror of both of these. I'm going to go through and find my XY plane again. And there we go. See? It smeared that chamfer as well. So that's the support pin. I'm going to save that and move on to the next part, which will be the bolt. So I'm going to start with my 2D sketch on the XY plane and then do my polygon with six sides, which is right there, by the way. I'm going to put my diameter. Oops, sorry. Diameter width thing which is 0.3 and this is all cockeyed and whatnot and it's not pretty for my OCD so I'm going to make this top line horizontal. There we go. So now I'm going to extrude this the entire 0.2 inches of its length and now I'll do my little primitive cylinder over here of a diameter of 0.26 Notice how I'm always, when I'm using primitive, always putting my dimension in before I click, because as soon as I click, it's going to ex exit the sketch mode and go into extruding. So, I'll just save you a little bit of time. So here I've got my 3.2 inches of length minus the 0.2 of the bolt, so I'm just going to do 3 inches. I think I put that dimension wrong. Yeah, I didn't actually put the dimension. Haha. -ha. See? As I was telling you to put the dimension, I forgot to put the dimension. Har, har, har. Alright, so now I've got to put the chamfer up in the edge. This is another typo. It's not actually 0.3 because that doesn't make sense. In fact, it can't even do that. Um, it's actually supposed to be 0 0.03. And so if I just go and chamfer all the way around, you can see the little preview. Well, that doesn't quite look right. That's not exactly what we want. So on both the nuts, instead, they have something called a revolve chamfer. The way we're going to do that is we're going to get a better view first. We go through and find the plane, that, and we want it to intersect two corners rather than just these straight flat parts, because otherwise this gets a little messy and doesn't work. So I'm going to select that, and then I'm just going to press S, which is the hotkey for sketch. But if I go and click sketch, it does a sketch on this plane, because I had it highlighted over here. So, that's great. Now I can do my sketch right in the middle of this part, 
but it's not so great because it's in the middle of the part, and all of the back head of the bolt is in the way of me actually seeing my plane. So what I'm going to do is press F7. That will hide most of it. It'll give me a cross section. Now I can go and do project geometry, which is just putting this 3D stuff on the 2D sketch so I can play with it. Now I'm going to do my line segment here, and this will be the chamfer. We'll extrude it. We'll cut it out. What? Okay. Sometimes Inventor does weird things like that. Um, so I'm just going to delete that line and try again. Here we go. So I've got 0 0.03 by 0 0.03. That's my chamfer. I'm going to finish sketch, revolve. I'm going to select that profile. Now I'm going to hover through here until I find the right axis I want, which is this Z axis. And so now it's trying to add on a bunch of stuff, but we don't want it to add, we want it to cut, so we're going to select cut, and bam, there we go. Here's our nice pretty revolve chamfer. So that's it for the bolt, and for the support pin. Oh, I forgot to save. So the next part that I'm going to do, I'm just going to do the whole next page, which is the spacer, the nut, and the center pin. Um, I'm going to post a link in the description of Mr. Collins' tutorial where he did the nut, and he showed doing the revolve chamfer there as well. That's it for this video.